right guys, if there's one thing you can guarantee with an electric car owner, it's that they keep a keen eye on the electricity tariff that they're on. It's kind of like dads and thermostats, it's just linked. About nine, ten months ago I moved to Green Energy UK, which I think at the time was the first, or very nearly the first, time of day based tariff for electricity usage. That basically means that depending on the time of day, you get charged a different amount per kilowatt hour for your electricity. Now at this stage I would like to point out I am not getting anything for this, there is no uh, sponsorship, there's no referral bonuses, there is nothing. I'm doing this because I genuinely think it will help someone who's in a similar situation to myself, sim similar usage pattern, who owns an electric car. However, if you do end up changing to Green Energy UK because of this video, please, when you ring up, let them know where you've seen it. Say, I have saw it on my channel and that's where I've got your custom from. This will kind of give me an idea of whether or not I have any uh, sponsorship potential, shall we say, with other companies on YouTube. Because at the end of the day, I need more equipment and it ain't cheap. Right, let's get on with Green Energy's tariff and I'll compare it with other people's tariffs later on. Uh, well, they have a nice video on YouTube which basically has lots of smiley happy people. So it must be good just because of that. There are three tiers to this structure. There's basically low tide, which is the off-peak cheap one mid tide as I'll call it which is the average standard during the day sort of price and then there are high tide which is kind of the peak expensive tariff. 6am to 4pm it's kind of like when you're at school or work or whatever that is 12p per kilowatt hour. From 4pm till 7pm kind of when everyone gets home and makes tea that is high tide which is 25p per kilowatt hour. It then goes back to mid tide which is after tea before everyone goes to bed. That is between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. And then we get to low tide, the off-peak cheap rate. So from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. overnight, it is 5p per kilowatt hour. That was during the weekday. On the weekend, it's basically the same structure, only there is no peak tariff. There's no 25p per kilowatt hour peak rate during the weekend. Now you can see where they're going here, they're trying to basically make it more expensive when it's peak and cheaper when it's off peak. So this is kind of gets around to the balancing the grid syndrome. This thing that people always say to me every single video I do is that we'll need 12 power stations when everyone gets an electric car and it's so, it's so ridiculously wrong uh, I've stopped responding to them. This is basically kind of making it so much cheaper to use it off peak you will naturally choose that time so therefore the grid will kind of self-balance itself because it's human nature to save money. I have moved most of my electricity usage, well at least half anyway, to the cheapest rate because I want to save money. It's not because I'm trying to balance the grid. So this is kind of the idea behind it and when everybody starts doing these time of day tariffs and I'm certain that everyone will at least have this option, people will naturally choose the cheapest one of course. Now over the last 12 months I've probably used nearly 7,000 kilowatt hours of electricity which is quite a lot but I have an electric car and I do a lot of miles in it. Well over a third, possibly up to a half of my electricity usage is the car itself. So if I could charge my car during off-peak times that would be a good thing financially. Now some of you are no doubt thinking there's no way I'm going out after 11 o'clock every night to plug the car in. Well, you don't have to. So let's jump in the leaf and show you why it's just so easy and not inconvenient at all to charge your car, because most of them do, it's not just a leaf, out of hours without any change to your standard routine. All you do is press the zero emission button here. If you have car wings, which is the previous version to this, then it's the same kind of button combination. You go up to charging timer there. And you can see that I've already obviously had mine set for a while. It starts at 10 past 11 uh, p.m. in this case and goes to 8. If I want to edit the schedule, it's literally as simple as adjusting that and then picking which days you want it to follow that particular schedule on. If, however, you want to override the schedule, so for example, if you get home from work and you do want it to charge at the peak time, for example, you just press that button there and that will override the schedule. Or if you're not near the car, you can do the same function over the Nissan Connect app. So as you just see, it's really, really easy to do. As far as I know, nearly all, if not all, electric cars have that capability to schedule the charge time. Let me know if yours doesn't, because I'm curious. But ultimately, I just plug the car in as I used to do before, but it doesn't start charging until it's off peak and cheap. So let's get down to the money, which is probably what most of you are bothered about, uh, and how much it's actually cost me. I'll give you a typical month, so I'll use October. 
Okay, as you can see here, this is my usage. Let me zoom in a bit because it's not really large. There's a clear pattern if you look around the low tide mark. 424 kilowatt hours of electricity I've used off peak, which is quite obviously the car itself. If you look at the high tide or the peak rate, I've only used 43 kilowatt hours in a month. However, that is obviously at 25p per kilowatt hour. So you can see the benefit immediately. I have used almost 10 times the electricity off peak as I have high peak and it's only cost me twice as much for 10 times the electricity. So it naturally kind of makes you want to use things when the power grid wants you to use it off peak. It's probably worth mentioning I haven't done anything differently to our daily routine. Uh, tea time's the same, everything has been perfectly normal. We haven't adjusted our routine at all to try and make things happen when it's cheaper for electricity. Other than the car, which is just pressing a few buttons, we've done nothing that we didn't do on our previous tariffs. So in total for the month, which I'm going to have to do myself because they don't do it on the bill, it's 740 kilowatt hours of electricity. So if you take that plus your standing charge, you could obviously do a comparison for whoever you're with. I am going to do a comparison for Ecotricity because it's the one that always gets rammed down my throat any time I do a charging video. Now, if I go on Ecotricity's website, right, full information for this tariff. Here we go. Let's zoom in a bit. Right, the standing charge for Ecotricity is 32.8755p p per day. That's including VAT. The unit rate is 13.1775. If your usage pattern fits, it's either going to be more expensive with Ecotricity or a lot cheaper. Let's have a look at the gas. The gas is 25.8p standing charge and 4.1p per unit, which is also a fair bit more expensive than green energy. Back to the original bill again, and if we add Ecotricity's calculations in there, as you can see, so it's standing tariff and the unit rate, that would come, including VAT for both, to £107.78 for the month. Including VAT, green energy cost me £72.12p per month. So that's a huge difference. That's a massive difference, in fact. Just for electric alone, you're looking at, what, 35 quid per month? Now let's have a look at gas. Green energy cost me 80 quid just over for that month. Uh, and I've done the same calculations for electricity. So 90 pounds, so it's a 10 a day just over for electricity on gas as well. So we're, we're looking at a, a quite a big difference, 46 pound 30 for that month. And that's a fairly average month is October as far as temperatures and whatnot go. Hell, if that carried on per month, <laughs> you'd be looking at five or 600 quid a year. Crikey. Now no doubt at some point, someone will mention that you get cheaper rapid charging with Ecotricity and they're correct. You basically get it half price. You can charge at 15 p per kilowatt hour on a rapid charger rather than 30. So if we assume a 70% charge, so you on a leaf, if you take your leaf on 10% and get it to roughly 80, which is a big charge, then how many of those would you need per month? I work it out very, very roughly at 16, 70% rapid charges per month, which would then break even with the price difference, which if that is a monthly thing, works out at 194 rapid charges per year to, uh, to basically break even. Uh, I'd probably do 20 a year, maybe. Certainly don't do that. I mean, <laughs> you have to do three or four a week, every week, I guess, to, to, to break even. Um, so I guess some people out there will do that. Um, it, it is a benefit. So I feel like we need to, to now compare this against just a bog standard non-green tariff. I supply energy, whoever they are, uh, they are the cheapest for me according to you switch. Right, I've done all the calculations for I supply energy. I won't bore you with the details. But basically, that would come to 99, just shy of 100 pounds for electric and 65 for gas. 165 pounds in total, 198 for electricity, 152 for green energy. So if I just stick that in order, you can see there that gas is quite expensive for green energy companies. However, because of the usage pattern I've now created, I guess, with doing most of, or a good bulk of it off peak, Green energy for me are still significantly cheaper than even supposedly the cheapest coal-fired energy 
uh, provider. If you had to, for whatever reason, charge your car during high tide, it would be way more expensive than probably anybody else for obvious reasons. However, doing what I've normally done, I get home from work, plug the car in and carry on with my life, I have saved just by changing the schedule on the car a significant amount of money. And this time of day tariff suddenly becomes, uh, well, it, it makes sense basically. And it helps balance the grid naturally. So it's a win-win really. Um, if, as I said before, you do a load of rapid charges, then Ecotricity is probably the one that you want to go for. But ultimately, I think we should be concentrating on reducing its usage rather than just going with a green energy company and thinking, well, I'm done now. Now, it seems like I'm basically saying Green Energy UK, brilliant, 100%, no problems at all. And as far as ringing up, billing, all that sort of stuff has gone, it's been great. However, getting the smart meters fit has been far from a brilliant experience. Now, on this one, we had it booked in between 1 and 6 p.m., I think a Monday, and we eventually got a phone call at quarter past five to say that there's been an emergency and the cat turned up. Now, I don't know about you, but in my business, we sometimes have emergencies as well, and I know well before 45 minutes before the end of the day that I'm not going to turn up there. So we get a call at quarter past five after waiting in half a day to say they weren't coming. Second time, because of what had happened, we picked another day, of course, and it was all booked in. I spoke directly to the meter installation company. So this isn't green energy that they're doing it, it's a third party. And we agreed, I think on a Friday, I can't remember if I'm honest, but basically, let's assume Friday. I got a text message on the Thursday to say, we'll be there tomorrow, see you soon. I then got a phone call from Green Energy saying, just making sure everything's fine for Wednesday's installation. Hmm? Yet another week goes on. Third time. This one was a good one. A couple of people turned up and then separately the installation engineer turned up. So finally we have people on site. However, what happened then was uh, a bit unique. Engineer basically said to the other guys, you brought the smart meters, yeah? No. You bring them. Well, I thought you brought them. Uh-uh, not us. So the smart meters they came to install for the third time of asking, they actually forgot to bring with them. At this point, we were kind of a little bit annoyed. What the f*** <coughs> hell are you lot playing at? Fourth time. This was a, you tell us when to turn up, we will. So nine o'clock on Monday, we will be there. No problem, set in stone, can't move, nothing will happen, sir. 10 to 9, I get a phone call. I'm afraid we have an emergency and we won't be there until maybe 12, 1 o'clock. Oh. Fifth time. Finally, we get the smart meter installed. Fifth time of asking. Five chuffing times. So let's go downstairs and have a look at the usage panel just so you can see the smart meter readouts. It's pretty basic, nothing exciting, but uh, I might as well show you it. Okay, you can see here, this is the uh, doofer that you get, the meter jobby. Uh, you can tell I've been uh, planning this. That is how much we're using per kilowatt hour at the moment for both gas and electric. If I press that, it will switch to the actual usage in watts or kilowatts. You click on there and it'll go to energy you use today, 5.9, 91. Uh, you can even enter a budget. I guess it badges you if you go above the budget. If I click on that bit there, you can click on electricity usage and it gives you a usage pattern for today uh, or the week. If I can click there, we go. Uh, you only got it on Tuesday, so which is why it's an incomplete week so you can see there what we've used you can obviously do it on month and year but we're way off having any of that stats uh, you can do the same for gas as well week tells you how much you've used so you can who used that much on wednesday go back to the menu uh, meter balance for electric and it basically shows you what you've used i guess it tosses it up i think that is accurate to what you've used rather than just a guesstimate because it is coming from the smart meter, ultimately. we just tilt it forward, there's a button on top you can see there. And that basically gives you this sort of menu. You can check the status of what's going on. Uh, so I click on electricity and it basically goes back to the same menu you've already seen. Press the status button and it tells you that everything's working. So the meters are talking to this thing. And it's on my Wi-Fi and going to a cloud account. So there we have it, guys. Please let me know what you think about this. Would this usage work for you? Could you charge your car out of hours? Um, let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. I'll put the uh, link up in a second. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.